Hi guys, welcome back or welcome if you're new. My name is Emma and this is Emma's Cottage. In today's video, I've got something kind of fun for you. Do you recognize this shirt? This was from a tutorial I did a few weeks back where we kind of did, they call it shattered or a sublimation tie-dye technique. And we did it just on a plain white shirt and we made the shirt awesome, right? Well, in today's video, we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna add an extra step and make it extra special. If you want to learn how to take something like this and turn it in to something like this, then keep watching. All right, you guys, here we are in Cricut Design Space. This is what I am familiar with. You could use any software that you choose. I know Silhouette has their own software. I know Design Bundles even has their own software, but I choose to use Cricut at this time just because that is what I am familiar with. So I'm gonna teach you today how to kind of come up with your own sheet. So you've seen in the past that I liked to go to Etsy and I find full page sheets for my sublimation tie dye technique, but I knew that it was gonna be really hard for me to find something that I had in my mind um, and I needed to create it myself. So this was super easy and I wanna show you guys how to do that really quick. So I started with a simple shape. I'm gonna grab a square. I am going to change this square to the color that I want by selecting it, coming up to this little gray box. And you can see here, this is where I have the color, but what I did is it has set colors here. And if you just select a green and you're like, well, that's not the green I want, you can go click this advanced button and then you can come in here and just kind of click around until you find the green color or whatever color it is that you're looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and stick with the green I found before. Next, what you need to do is we need to come up with the stitch marks, grab some shapes, grab the square again, and I went ahead and I changed it black. I unlocked the ratios here so that I could move it to whatever size I wanted. And I just did, as you can see here, I did about that skinny of a black mark. All right, you can even make it longer for right now since you're in there, then you're going to do the same thing. Grab another square, we're gonna change it black, and we're gonna unlock the ratios, and we're gonna do the same thing for the crisscross marks, right? Maybe have those ones, something like that, just to give you an idea of how I made this. Maybe a little bit smaller there, right? Something like that. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate it. I'm gonna grab both of them, and I'm gonna hit duplicate again. Then I'm gonna grab all of them, and I'm gonna hit duplicate again, and I just keep doing that until I get as many as I need. And then I just start dragging them over on top of this. And just space them out however you want. Be as artistic as you want. If you don't want them equally split, then you don't need to do that. But just kind of showing you what I do here. Now that's probably enough, so I'm gonna delete the rest. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna move this out of the way. And I wanna line these up so they're all equal. So I, what I did is I clicked and went over all of them. I'm going to go up here to align and probably the easiest way to do this is align left or align right. It doesn't matter. It's going to do the same thing. We're going to align them so that they're all equal. The next thing we want to do is I want to make sure that they, they are equally distributed so that you don't have one that is, you know, skinnier than another. Now you absolutely could. I'm just showing you what I did. So to make sure that they are distributed equally, then I go down here and you're going to decide if you're doing horizontal or if you're doing vertical. So because these are vertical, I'm going to go ahead and click vertical and you saw them switch there. And now they are exactly split perfectly. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab all of these and I'm going to group them all so that they're all one. Then I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to put it right over them. I'm going to highlight and go back up to this line and I'm going to do center um, horizontally. There we go. And now it's Perfect. Now I can group this all together. And in fact, I'm going to go an extra step and I'm going to go down here. I'm going to click weld. And the reason I do that is see how many layers I've created here. There's a whole bunch. And when you're going to create all of these different stitches, you don't want that many layers or it's going to slow down your design space. So we're going to go ahead and weld this and that's going to make all these one layer. Let's go ahead and click weld. Okay. So now I've welded it and now I need to, let's just go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. And now I need to duplicate this tons and tons of times because I want to um, create, recreate kind of what I did before. So I'm going to click duplicate and grab them both. I'm gonna click duplicate again and grab all of them and I'm gonna click duplicate again. You guys can kind of see what I'm doing here, right? Just keep clicking duplicate until you get a whole bunch. You can see over here, all of these duplicates, all of these different layers. So then what I do is I'm gonna make this just, you know, a little bit, let's just do about right there. And I'm gonna grab these and I'm just gonna randomly start placing them here and there and everywhere. Now, if you wanted to change the sizes, absolutely. This is your design, this is your creation. You do whatever you want to do. Just trying to give you an idea of what I did. I 
think this gives you a good idea of how I somewhat created a pattern, right? I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna move this out of the way and I'm going to grab all of these at one time. And guess what I'm gonna do, you guys? I'm gonna go weld it because I don't want all these layers. So let's go ahead and weld all of these together. Now you only have that one weld. And then I'm going to right click and duplicate. Right, and I just sit there and I put them up. Let's do it again, duplicate, put it up, right? Give yourself a, an idea. Bring this back over. Let's go ahead and unlock our measurements here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. I forgot to show you guys this first. Let's grab all three of these. So they're all different, right? Three different sections. We're gonna grab them all. We are going to align, let's just align right. It doesn't matter. And then I'm going to weld these even together. How about that? So now we definitely only have one left. I'm going to grab this and go across. It's unlocked, so I can bring this as close to the sides as I want. And there you go. You now have a design. Um, I can group these together so that it's now one. And then the last thing you're going to want to do, let's unlock the measurements. And I'm going to say that the width of this is 11. Oh, I always do that. Does anybody else do that? 11, enter. And then we're going to change this to 8.5, enter. And now you've got an exact eight and a half by 11 sheet. So then what you would do next is you're going to grab your snipping tool. Every computer names it something different. If you're on a Mac, you do it a little bit differently, but it's um, basically the same technique is you're just grabbing a snipping tool and you're going to get as close as you can to this image. You go all the way around it. Like so, and then you need to save this to your desktop. So I'm going to hit save as. And I'm just gonna call this green. I'm gonna hit enter, close out of this. Now, one thing I wanna point out really quick because I forget that you guys may not know this. See how I don't have grid marks and typically you do? This little area here, if you click on it, see, I wish that it would tell you this because a lot of people don't know. This is what adds your grid marks. So I've had a few people ask me like, how do you do the snapshot without having the grid marks in it? It's because I removed the grid marks. I personally don't usually use the grid marks very often when I'm using design space. But if you keep clicking on this square, it gives you three different options. Um, an option of a one inch grid mark, an option of centimeters, or no grid marks at all. So whenever I go to snip any of my designs, I remove the grid marks so that they're not on the design when I go to print it. Now we're gonna go ahead and open our Microsoft Word. Those of you that watch my videos often know that this is my software of choice when I'm printing on my sublimation printer. So I wanna make sure that I go to my layout tab. The first thing I always do is I go to my margins, I go click on custom margins and I click zero tab, zero tab, zero tab, zero. I'm gonna hit the enter button. It's gonna tell me, hey, Emma, you can't do that. It's fine, I'm just gonna hit fix. And it automatically changes it to the 0.12. Now you definitely could go in and put 0 0.12, 0 0.12, but I just do it really quick by hitting zero because I know it's gonna correct it for me. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. What that did is made it so that your margins all the way around, it's gonna give you your best printing sheet. The other thing we did is we bring over my image. It's on one of my desktops. I'm just gonna grab it and drop it. You can see that this is laid out um, horizontally. So I'm going to go to my orientation and I'm gonna change it to landscape mode instead of portrait mode that it's currently in. I've already got on the size, I'm already at the eight and a half, 11, so I'm gonna keep it there. And then what I do here, if you double click on the image, I go to wrap text. So when you double clicked on the image, it took you to this picture format tab. Then I'm gonna to go to wrap image and I'm going to go to behind text. And the reason I'm doing that, if I tried to move this right now, it's not going anywhere, it's stuck. So I wanna to go to wrap text and I wanna to go to behind text and that just helps it so that I can move it anywhere I need to, right? Then the next thing I do is I'm gonna go over here to the width and we all know that the width um, is 11 and that automatically changed it to an 8.5. So I just make sure that it's center as closely as I can. And it's giving me some issues, there we go. Close enough, you go ahead and click file and print and it's gonna show you what it's gonna look like when you print and there you go, you've got your full page so that you can sublimate on. We're gonna go ahead and print this and then I'll meet you guys over at the table to press. All right, you guys, here we are over here in the pressing corner. I'm going to show you exactly how I get this shirt set up to get it pressed. And as you've seen from my other videos that I do the same technique, I get it prepared front and back at the same time. I'm going to press one side, I'm gonna flip it, and I'm gonna press the other side without undoing anything. Then I'm going to take off both sides 
but leave the shirt crumpled up. I'm gonna take the shirt outside and I'm gonna bleach those same spots. That's how you're going to get this really cool look and only show these areas bleached and not the whole shirt. So let's go ahead and try it. Start with a piece of butcher paper underneath. I found that that's the easiest way. I put my shirt face up and the reason I do that is because I wanna see where my image is going to go. Now you definitely can cut around your image, tear around your image, however you wanna do it. Now I'm sure you guys are gonna ask, where did I get my image? This one I actually painted myself. Um, and then I took a picture of it. I, maybe, I'll make a, maybe I'll make a video about how to take pictures from your iPhone and be able to put it onto your computer so that you can print on sublimation paper. Sometimes it seems really simple, but if the quality isn't good, then it won't show up well. So we'll see how this one works. I think it'll be pretty good. What we're doing is we're trying to see exactly where this image is gonna go because I don't wanna sublimate on this area and I don't wanna bleach this area. Now, if it happens, it happens. It's not that big of a deal. It's This shirt is supposed to look kind of messy. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I'm four finger lengths below, which looks good. And then I like to see if it's center. And I usually use my measuring tape just to make sure that I am center. I just go from close part, about right there, about right there. We could go over just a tad, about right there. So then what I do is I start, I'm trying to grab just the top part of the shirt. So I'm pinching very lightly to just grab the top so that it's leaving the bottom underneath. So I'm grabbing the top part and I'm kind of trying to pull it in. So sometimes you kind of have to go release it from the bottom. Just pulling it in around my image. Again, just putting my hands in here to try and separate the shirt. It's been folded for a while, so the more you can separate the front from the back, the easier this part's gonna be. And you're just trying to get it as close as you can to what you think. So now that I've got most of my edges pulled up, then I'm gonna actually pull out my Frankenstein or whatever image it is that you're choosing. Now I've got my outline, as you can see, all the way around, I've got this outline where my image is gonna go. So then what I do is just very carefully start folding that outline in to itself. Again, trying to just make sure that it's the top layer and not the bottom layer. And the reason I say that is because when we turn around and try and sublimate the back, you don't wanna accidentally pull the front from what you just did. So now that I've got my centerpiece hopefully completely covered, now I can start really playing with it. And again, just trying to undo as much as I can and try and just scrunching it up here and there without touching that center section. I don't wanna mess with that at all. Okay, just keep doing it here. Something like this is gonna work for us. Okay, then we've got our two sheets. I'm really interested to see how this turns out because as you saw from the computer, it was like super green and this does, this looks very blue. So, well, I guess we're gonna see, right? So what I do is I go ahead and I'm gonna set this on top and then I've got my second sheet that goes for the back of the shirt. I'm gonna set that underneath. And what I do is I just hold this tight and I slide it in. See that? So that none of the top is disturbed. You can even pull it back out and you can see, yeah, none of that got disturbed. It's all in there. Now we know the front's good. I like the way the front is set up, but I have no idea how the back looks and I wanna make sure the back looks good. So I'm gonna grab this one and put my hand underneath that one. I'm gonna slowly flip it over and I'm gonna take this one up and look at that. If I would have sublimated like that, I would have had one big piece and you definitely don't want that. So that's why it's so important that you definitely flip it. Now, this is the other very important part. Just like I was showing you before, only touch this layer of the shirt. Do not touch the front. So I'm not diving deep on this one. I'm just barely trying to grab the fabrics at the back of the shirt and scrunching it around. That makes sense, hopefully. Something like this should probably work. Just trying to get as much surface as I can, because if you don't get too much surface, then you're not gonna really see the cool artwork of it. So hopefully you can kind of see what I did there. And then I just put that one on top. Now I could definitely flip it and make sure it didn't hurt anything, but I've done this quite a few times and I have not had a problem with the front touching. Now, again, if you're, if you're reaching too far down, absolutely, you're gonna have a problem. Now there's a few different options. So if you can handle it, what I try and do is squeeze it down and I try and tape the two sheets together. Now, if this part can be difficult, if you can't do this, don't worry about it. Just make sure that you're taping it 
to at least the butcher paper. The reason I'm not taping it to the butcher paper is because then I have a hard, harder time flipping it. And, but you can do it however you want. Whatever your little heart desires. Just showing you my tricks. Just grabbing the two, I'm gonna do the four corners and then I do the insides. We are all taped up. Now, do you need to tape it this much? Probably not. Do I type it this much? Sometimes. <laughs> it depends on my mood. And I want this to turn out so that you guys can see how cool this looks. So I did, I taped it pretty good. Like you said, um, like I told you before, it's kind of its own little pocket in between there. Now this is a size small. If you had a larger shirt, you would probably need two of these sheets. So either print two eight by 11s or print on a bigger sheet of like the um, 11 by 17 or however you wanna do it. But yeah, the bigger your shirt, definitely the more surface you're gonna need. Okay, so now that we've got this all in its pocket, we're gonna go ahead and lift up the butcher paper. And it doesn't matter if you're gonna put it this way or this way, it doesn't matter as long as it's underneath your press and as long as your press is being protected. So um, you may have noticed from last videos, I didn't have Teflon. I do have Teflon now, I've invested, I mean, it's not very expensive. I got Teflon, I've got the magnets that are protecting the heat press, but I am still, going to use butcher paper on top of that as an extra protection. And I did the same thing on the bottom. I've got my Teflon on the bottom with an extra butcher paper, then the sublimation, and then the shirt, then the sublimation, then the butcher paper, then the Teflon. Hopefully you caught all that. So now what I need to do is I need to let loose some of my pressure. So part of sublimation is heat, the other part's pressure. If you don't have too much pressure, it's not gonna sublimate. So we wanna make sure we have enough pressure, but not too much that I have to sit here and hold it down for the full 60 seconds. So let's test out this first one and see how we do. Perfect, I actually did really good. So again, I am pressing right now at 395 for about 60 seconds. I have seen people range from 385 to 70 seconds. So it really just depends on you and your heat press. My magic number on my heat press is anywhere from 390 to 395. If I get to like 400, it usually scorches or I just don't have the best results, which my heat press might be running a little bit high. So you could invest in a temperature thermometer. Um, so there's some that you can actually just push a button and it reads how hot your press is. Those are awesome. Um, in fact, I will find one and I'll put it in the link below for you guys. And just to make sure like, okay, it says 400, but is it really 400 is it 410? So I'm pressing at 390, 395. Well, does that mean that my press is really at 400? It's just reading differently. So don't get heartbroken if somebody's pressing at a different temperature than you are. They probably aren't. It's just where their temperature or where their press is. Okay, now this is definitely going to be hot. So be careful for this part. Now the heat was directly on this upper sheet. I am not going to reuse the sheet even if I flip it. I want to protect my press at all times. If I lift up the sheet, hope you guys can see it. You definitely see an image in the middle. There's a nice, beautiful green image right there in the middle. So I wouldn't want to reuse this part. So what I do is I'm gonna grab another one, or I'm pre-cut, so you guys don't have to listen to this horrible sound of me cutting. And I'm gonna grab this off of it. It's not too hot, it's a little hot, but I can touch it. I'm gonna grab it and I'm gonna very carefully flip it over onto this new sheet. Now this sheet's fine. I've always checked it just to double check, but there was no, there was no color that transferred on the bottom, just the top where the heat was. So again, I just flipped it. This is a new sheet now because I didn't want to use the old sheet that could possibly sublimate on the bottom. I flipped it. It's been sublimated on that side. Now I need to sublimate this side, right? And I'm not undoing anything. I'm going to put it back. Now let's put on this sheet. Now this was the bottom sheet. I'm reusing it. It didn't get sublimated on, so I'm good to reuse it. Plus I have that added protection of the Teflon paper. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to press it for 395 for another 60 seconds or 400 or 385. What do you guys choose? Typically though, with shirts and sublimation, they typically say 400 degrees for 60 seconds is pretty much the rule of thumb. You just need to figure out what works best for you and whatever projects you're doing, because there's different projects, there's different substrates that you guys are gonna sublimate on, such as, I mean, anything, purses, placemats, doormats, hats. I mean, there's so many different. And anywhere that you guys buy your substrates from, usually on that page that you buy it on, it'll say, it'll tell you how, what your temperature should be at and how long you need to press it. So make sure that if you're buying from any different website out there, make sure that you're paying attention to those details. And then I keep a notebook. Every time I press something new, I actually have it in my notebook saying, okay, I pressed, 
Um, even if it's a shirt, I'll say this was a 65% poly, 35% cotton, and this is how long I pressed it for. So keep your own notes because really, like I said before, it totally is according to your heat press and how your heat press is working. Okay, so we've got these both sublimated on. You can see now that one's definitely green. Now I wouldn't want to use it again. But the good news is we don't need to reuse anything at this point because now that both sides are sublimated, the front and the back, we're gonna take this outside once it cools down just a little bit. We're gonna take it outside and we're gonna spray it just like this. I'm gonna very carefully take off these pieces, probably by using some scissors so that I don't accidentally move the shirt. Um, and I'm gonna very carefully take it outside and I'm gonna spray bleach on it just exactly the way it is. Once I see that it starts turning color, then I'm gonna start opening it up. I'm gonna put a piece of cardboard in between and then I'm gonna uh, bleach the image section out next. So let's go ahead, let's cut this off and then we're gonna head outside. All right, you guys, we're outside in my backyard. We need to bleach this shirt now. Super hot, super hazy. There's a lot of fires in Oregon right now. So the less time I have to spend outside, the better. So I'm gonna go as quickly as we can. Um, just need to fill up my leech. As you guys know, don't worry, this is just water. I rinse out my spray bottles every single time. We don't need very much since we're just doing this one shirt. As you can see, I brought it out just like we pressed it. Actually, it's still a little bit warm. I cut off these, um, the tape with my scissors. I'm just gonna slide it right off here. So hopefully you guys can see that okay. It is still super flat from when we pressed it. And all I'm gonna do is, I honestly, I should be wearing gloves right now. And in fact, I'm gonna spray this side, I'm gonna run inside, go grab some gloves and come right back. So let's go ahead and spray this one side. And I'm using my mister. I love this mister. A little bit goes a long way. I truly don't have to squeeze it very much. If you do too much, it's going to seep down into the shirt and you only want this part bleached and then we're going to flip it over to the other side. I'm going to run go grab my gloves to be able to pick this back up and I'll be right back. Okay, it literally has been less than a minute. Ran in, ran out, grabbed my gloves. I grabbed our piece of cardboard because we're going to have to bleach the center of the shirt for the image part. Um, it's already turning really pretty green. So you know how I was worried about it kind of being a bluey color inside when we were pre-pressing? It looks great. It's exactly what we're going for. So now what I'm gonna do is just grab this, I'm gonna flip it over, and I'm going to bleach the other side. Now this is a really fine mist, so it may look like I'm bleaching a ton, but it's just a really fine mist. So now that we've done both sides, this is where I am really different than a lot of the other people out there. A lot of people will leave it for like 10, 15 minutes, do the other side. I do them both so that they're processing equally. So now that they're both sprayed, oh my goodness, I love it. You guys, you have to see how cool. If I can bring this up close. How cool is that going to be? So cool. Okay, so let's do the center image now. Now, on the center, you want to be careful that it doesn't bleed through to the back. So that's where I reuse and reuse and reuse and reuse my cardboard boxes. You guys can use whatever you want. I've seen lots of different people use lots of different things. And you guys know me, I typically would outline an image. That's how I like to do mine. And I probably should have done that on this one. You know what, I still can. I'm gonna go grab my image, be right back. Okay, again, like literally less than two minutes. So what I did is I'm reusing some butcher paper. I just grabbed my image, I quickly traced around it, and then I cut around it with butcher paper. I'm gonna lay that down on here because I definitely don't wanna lay my image on here because there's bleach on this shirt, and I don't want it to accidentally, what did I just do? Oh, my I don't want it to accidentally ruin my image. So I'm gonna quickly just do an outline. Sorry, it's usually quieter out here, but everybody must be coming home from work early. Do my best to try and center this as best I can. And then I just grab, I was gonna say my paint, I grab my bleach and a fine point or fine angled brush and I'm just gonna go right around as closely as I can. And then I just go back in with my bigger brush and I fill in the center. Got the 
outline done, then I go ahead and I do the center. I didn't want to do this, but I'm going to. I'm just going to splash the shirt more so that it looks like I did it on purpose. Which it's fine. I mean, this is supposed to be kind of a shattered, cool looking tie-dye shirt, so. Wasn't according to plan, but it's okay. Now this is just another method. You probably haven't seen me do this method before, but it's just basically getting your paintbrush and just dabbling the bleach onto the shirt. You can do this also. I mainly do this with a different type of spray bottle, just a regular spray bottle. I put it on the spritz mode. I stand kind of far back and then I spray it. But I kind of like this look sometimes. It just kind of depends on what shirt and what artsy fartsy feel I'm feeling that day. I'm sure you guys know what I mean. Okay, so I feel like the front looks good. I'm going to hurry and flip it. And I'm going to do that same thing on the back. clean up some of my mess out here. I'm gonna head inside for a few minutes, cool down. You might see me next time with the ponytail while we let this continue to bleach. Um, I'm gonna let it process probably on this side for about five minutes. I'm gonna switch it five minutes and I kind of go back and forth until I feel like both sides are equally processed. If I feel like any areas get too bleached too quickly, that's when I'm gonna pull in my hydrogen peroxide and I'm just gonna spray that one section just a teeny bit to get it to slow down a little bit until the rest of the shirt is good to go. Now that your shirt is washed of the bleach and dried, then what I do next is I press all of the shirt to try and get more of the wrinkles out. Now you can see the shirt that I'm currently wearing, it's about four weeks old and I've washed it a handful of times and it still has wrinkles. So trying to press some of these wrinkles out is definitely going to help. I do this before I place that center image and I make sure that I use a piece of butcher paper underneath and on top to help protect my heat press and my Teflon sheets. All right, we've got most of the wrinkles out. As you can see, there's still some left, but it's okay, I'm happy with it. Now it's time to press our center image, put it face down, make sure that you tape it with heat resistant tape and go ahead and press it again, but make sure you have butcher paper to cover the entire press. Atlanta. I love it. Oh, it turned out so good. I'm so happy. I noticed that there was some scorching, so I got my hydrogen peroxide. I sprayed it on a few times, and then I lowered the heat press about an inch above the image just to help it evaporate a little bit, and it turned out so great. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. What did you think? Do you think this is fun? Do you think this is something you're going to try? make sure you join our Facebook group, which is Emma's Cottage DIY, and post your awesome projects in there. I love to see what you guys create. One last show and tell of what we created today. I mean, there's so many more ideas, and yes, this is my own personal painting that I, that I painted and then was able to take a picture of it and sublimated it. But you guys, there's so many within Cricut Design Space, so many different cool designs that you guys could create yourself. I mean, I know that today we created this really cool green sheet with stitches, but I mean, you could do a green sheet with nuts and bolts because that's kind of how he's put together. So 
Use your imagination, create something fun and exciting for yourself or your customers. As always, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. If you liked this video, please don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit subscribe. And the most important thing, don't forget to ring that bell so that you get notified anytime that I upload a new video. Until next time, we'll see you later, friends.